Morning. Um, a little share, uh, because it's something that I noticed on some of the videos I've seen um, of people speaking about Social Security. And I, I feel like there's some misinformation going on out there. Um, some of these video channels, you can tell that they're not actually practitioners. They're um, they're grabbing whatever um, soundbite it seems almost like uh, is available. Um, and then they put some bizarre header on it so that people click on it. Um, but here's one, and some of them you could tell are not even practitioners. So they're just, you know, reading off some, I don't know, blog or, or whatever they're doing. Um, and sometimes it's just fabrication, um, you know, getting people hyped up over something that, th that doesn't exist um, or getting them excited that they're going to get a, SS is giving you a $5,000 check this month just because they want to. I mean, silliness, right? But anyway, here's one that um, I don't know for all who have spoken on the topic, but when it comes to, there's been some videos that kind of seem to be suggesting as a blanket rule, um, notwithstanding potential exceptions, that someone who has uh, a work history is disabled and files for social security disability should really avoid um, filing for SSI. So I just want to get the facts out there of how this over overlays upon one another. Um, so you can decide um, whether you will be filing for SSI along with your SSD. Um, the, if you have a healthy SSD amount, and that would be your, your estimated amount assuming you don't have a governmental pension based on income that you didn't pay social security taxes on, that would be that WEP thing we talk about. But if you have a healthy work history of paying in your social security taxes on that work, and you're gonna have a, a decent benefit, um, say, you know, well over a thousand dollars. It is true that when you get months of payments from SSD, that's social security disability, you would not be eligible for SSI, Supplemental Security Income, which is that needs-based welfare program. So one might say, well, then why should I apply for both? This is because there is a five-month waiting period with Social Security Disability that you do not get any benefits paid for those five months you are disabled. That would generally sometimes be the first five months you're disabled um, or the five months if you were disabled preceding um, the 12 months that preceded your date of application. That gets a little complicated, but that's about the, um, the limited retroactivity of payments um, and, and where that 17 month total comes in. But if you want to get paid, if, if it's going to be available, SSI for the five months that you wouldn't be getting SSD, and that could be, you know, in 2023, 914 times five. That's quite a bit, a nice chunk of change. Um, and if you think you could reasonably be eligible for it. So if you have a super, if you're super poor um, under the SSI rules, and you're going to want to look those up, resources and income, since you wouldn't be getting SSD income at the time, and presumably you may not have been working at all, even part-time during that time, then you could have, unless you have income from other sources like investments, you rent out property, who knows, um, or a spouse who does either of the above and has income, because that would be deemed to you, then you could be um, eligible for, and it happens all the time. I have, I would say the majority of my clients have that five month window. They're not otherwise well-to-do. They're struggling um, using up, um, all their savings is gone. They've been borrowing. That's usually where it comes in. Those five months could be SSI months, um, assuming they didn't exceed the resources and income. And so that's why um, one should consider whether they should be filing a concurrent claim so they can grab that extra, what do we say, 900 times, five, um, you know, $4,500 um, potentially. And it takes an analysis. Now, let's say you're like, I, I don't have time to do that analysis. I'm not even sure how to do it. Um, some of the videographers out there have been saying, well, if you do do it, it's going to hold up your SSD for a really long time and you're going to take an extra six months to get paid. That's not exactly entirely true. 
Um, what is true is that when you, the disability fight is the same. So you're not doing a fight for SSD proving you're disabled and then a fight for SSI to prove you're disabled. No, they, they actually are one decision that applies to both. So there's no extra time there. Uh, once you are found disabled, then they go and the SSI people get the case first. So this is another, the, the, the medical decision has been made or determination. And that's the big battle, right? Then they go back and say, oh, she had an SSI application. Let's do that one first. And they make sure that all those months, there was no work income or other income or spousal income or whatever that is. And then they will pay out the SSI for all the months that it applies to. Once that's paid out, then they go to SSD and they figure out what that pay would be. And then because once those the SSD months are retroactively paid, it'll turn out that those SSI months should not have been in theory. They're going to be offset. So what you got from SSI for that month is going to be taken out of the SSD for that month. Um, and you're just going to get the balance, the extra from the SSD for that month because you already got the 900 and something from the SSI. Okay, so that is a little bit of extra time. It could be, you know, a, a few weeks. It could be a couple of months. Um, but here's the thing. If you now know that you, like when you win your case and you see when the date is that they say you won it as of, and you know that you had more than, if you're single, $2,000 in the bank, 3,000 if married, um, or your spouse was pulling in 50 grand and you're not going to be eligible for any of that SSI, even for those months you didn't get SSD, you can contact the S. I just did it the other day. And it was great because actually the SSA called me and asked if we wanted to do this. Um, my client would not be eligible for SSI for any of the months um, to which she had applied for the SSI. Um, so, and that's just the way the months fall, fall in. And it was because every month that she had filed for SSI, she had also would be eligible for SSD payments. Um, so that's what would have knocked her out uh, because of the date they found her disabled. You don't know what date they're gonna find you disabled when you're applying. So you can cover your base by doing a dual and then if it turns out you're not going to see any SSI net benefit from it, you can ask to not pursue the SSI claim so it can go straight on to the SSD payments, SSD. Did I say SS? I don't even know what I said. Um, so again, the, the, the stake in the game is one, the five months that you wouldn't be getting SSD, or if your SSD is so low, you could be getting SSI the whole time to get you at least up to a total of 914 or whatever that rate would be. Um, and the third reason is, gosh forbid, they find you disabled, but you're but at a time when your SSD insured status had expired, because remember it's term insurance, we have some videos on that. Um, if you have that SSI pending application, you will win that particular program, that claim, um, when you're not eligible to win it on the other one. So there's a multitude of reasons why I still think, unless you know for sure, you're going to not be eligible for any of it. And that's an analysis. And that's also, if you happen to know if and when they're gonna find you disabled, what date as of, because it's not always when you think you are. Um, so, I mean, if, if SSI monies, uh, that you wouldn't otherwise have 5,000, whatever it is, is not a big deal to you and you don't even want to be bothered, so be it. That's a personal choice. But you got to know the costs, the pros and the cons, the costs and the benefits um, before you listen to someone who says don't apply. I just think you need to know what you could be giving up. And mind you, um, it is not unusual that we come to the end of a case that we prevailed on. We're like, yeah, she's not going to be able to get that SSI is going to net out to no benefit. Let's contact the SSA and, and um, you know, explain it to the client how you, you're not going to net out any benefit. It's just going to be slowing up. the. You're going to get the SSI first and the SSD second, and it's going to wash out this. So, um, it, you know, you can avoid spending the, the government working time too, as well as not tacking on those extra weeks of them doing the two different left hand, right hand business that one comes after the other. The SSI workout happens first, then the SSD, two different offices too. So 
it, it, it works out well when we contact them and say, she does not want to pursue the SSI claim. She understands that there will be, you know, there's going to be, there's going to be no net win. So why bother with all that extra energy, time, and resources of both the government and the delay caused to the claimant? But you don't know that until after you have a prevail and you know as of what date they found you disabled. And you're also going to know what date did I apply for SSI? What date did I apply for SSD? When did my SSD payments kick in? Or does it not even matter about the SSD payments because... Um, I, I'm not eligible anyway because I have a working spouse or I have, you know, $100,000 in my 401k, okay? All right, that's it. But I think it's really important to weigh those things and don't, any of those blanket, unexplained um, videos that may not be from a practitioner, I think you gotta really be careful, okay? I see, I see a few out there and it looks like clickbait. <laughs> but anyway, I hope this helps guys. If you have any questions, put them down below. But remember, don't put anything personal about yourself down below. Okay. This is a public forum, as you know. Bye, guys.